talked about eating. The Grambling State Tigers, a record of 21 and 14, and their coach is Dante Jackson, a two-time SWAC Coach of the Year. And for more, let's send it over to Andy Katz. So what happens when Grambling State and Dante Jackson have a historic first ever win and their first ever appearance in the XLA tournament? Well, you get a phone call from Vice President Kamala Harris, who phoned Jackson and the entire Grambling team after that victory, telling her that the entire team how proud she was as an HBCU grad. She graduated from Howard, and the conversation Dr. J. Jackson relayed to me yesterday during the shootout, he said it was unbelievable, a March Madness memory for a lifetime. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Andy. Our officials tonight, a great crew. Doug Shows, who's officiated five Final Fours and two national championships. A.J. Desai in the NCAA tournament, and Jason Baker in the NCAA tournament again. And here we go with the Boilermakers controlling. They got Braden Smith on top. Boyer and down low. Eating. First down, tough job. Aku is down there. Shot clock at five. Edie spins. Oh, fighting for it in there. Kaufman ran almost had it. But the Tigers come out with it. It's always interesting to see how teams are going to defend Edie. They seem to want to play him one on one and let Aku play behind him. Well, Aku's got his hands <laughs> full. No matter how they decide to play him. With it. Goes your drive and fire. It's an 80 rebound. And Purdue doesn't play racehorse basketball, but they get the ball up to court very quickly. They do a wonderful job moving the ball from side to side, and they're looking for Zachini all the time. Brandon Smith is a sophomore. Outside, last challenge, three, 80 crew, and that's the result. That was partially blocked. So a big break there for Purdue. Good defense on the part of Grambling State. Grambling State beat Montana State by seven in overtime in the first four in Dayton on Wednesday. And took a bus here from Dayton, arrived about 2.30 in the morning. The Boilermakers the sometimes have a tough time defending the dribble against quick, shifty guards, and that's what we see from Grambling. And Martin is definitely shifting and very quick. Oh, he's extremely quick and fearless. Fifth year at Grambling, he's been with them for this whole ride that they've been on the last couple of years to try to get to the NCAA tournament. Smith got the screen. Oh, That's a high percentage shot there. But what did Matt Payne tell us yesterday? He wants layups and dunks. Uh, absolutely, know. and he does not want turnovers. That's right, he said, Zach Eady tells him sometimes, well, you make me walk on my junk hook, jump hook all the time. And Painter says, well, yeah, that's okay, but I want laps and dives. Looking inside, Dozier puts it up and through. He was a first-team all-conference player, Contavious Dozier. He is a junior, and the game tied at four. Now, he's our leading scorer, but only at 12.9 points. They're a pretty balanced team. Jones, Kaufman on the screen. Braden Smith. And down here for Kaufman on. Muscle on his way. Burn. Got the rebound. Down again. New shot clock outside. Braden Smith. Three. Well, we say it all the time. Offensive rebounds so often lead to open threes. And Braden Smith, of course, a huge key for Purdue. And you see he's got a wrap on his calf there. That's given him some problems over the last few games. Burnett to Dozier, and Dozier will put up the 15 footer. And the rebound by Smith. And Indiana Mr. Basketball, the biggest ever in Dayton State in high school. Jones, who transfers in from the Missouri Valley Conference. Look at him leave. Right on fire. Edie's got the rebound. Back on the wing, it's Smith. Edie down low. Aku is defending. A 
Cole is working really hard down there, Dan. He doesn't need to foul him on that. At this point, there's nothing you can do. He either makes the jump hook or he doesn't. The thing I don't like about fouling him is now he gets to go to the line. He's in great shape, like you said, but he's a big guy, and now he gets to rest. If he makes a jump hook, take it out of the net, let's go the other way, and let's keep Zach and Edie on the move. Well, and the other thing, Edie is, is very, very good free throw shooter. He misses that one. But he gets fouled more than anybody else in the country. He does, takes a ton of free throws. And this year, once again, he was awarded the Big Ten Player of the Year. Second consecutive season for that. I don't think that was a tough shot. No, it wasn't. <laughs> and there's a lot of good players in the Big Ten, but Zach Edie's that good. Antoine Burnett, a coup inside. That's a really good job. You use your quickness on the perimeter. They spread the court. Burnett drives to the basket, beats Lawyer easily, forces help to come, and they get an opportunity inside. Well, they do a great job moving the ball side to side and then attacking. They're a team that's on the attack. He's a 45% three-point shooter. He is. I'll tell you, I'm watching a coup. He's tired already. Having to lean on Zach Eady down there every possession, that is so tired. It's Dozier again. Right by Eady to the rack with the reverse. What a nice move from him. He's driving to the basket. I think this is optimistic of him, but he really made a nice play going underneath the basket to protect the ball from Eady. Absolutely. He put Eady right under the rim. And so there's no chance he has to block the shot. And the Foul. Well, they say they have 20 fouls to give, right? That's the second on Aku. Four point for New League. Just getting underway. Getting the on TBS. A year ago, Purdue suffered. Only the second ever one seed lost to a 16 seed against Fairleigh Dickinson. Boilermakers were out of sorts all night, shooting 36% from the floor and turning it over 16 times. And FDU won it 63 to 58. And double digit seeds over the last three years, Dan, have caused Purdue problems. Well, that's true, Kevin, and that's a history that the Purdue players have not tried to run away from. But this is a much better Purdue team. They shoot the three better, they rebound the ball better, and it's just they're, they're and they're better defensively. They're a team that's much, I think, better equipped to move through this tournament. They're a number one seed, Andy, for the fifth time in program history. And from the moment that happened, after the game, Matt Painter did not run and hide from it. And I talked to this team, covered this team throughout the course of the season. And in fact, in Zach Eady's last game, a couple Sundays ago at Mac Arena, after the game, he spoke to me again about how they do not run and hide from it. They know what happened. They obviously want to get back to this point, pass this weekend, get to the Final Four. That's their goal. But they are not in shame over it. They know to him. Embrace may not be the right word, but they have embraced the fact that they lost to a 16 and they want to get back and get to a final four after what happened last year. Andy, thank you very much. Mason Gillis is in the game. The also a nice play from Heidi, who checks in for the first time. That's a killer right there for Grantley. You get Edie to miss two, and you don't come up with the rebound on the free throw. Edie double. Braden Smith outside. Long three. <laughs> Him up and generally in college when you wrap them up like that that's going to be a flagrant foul but when a guy like that gets motion in one way you cannot stop it right that big that is amazing what he brings to the floor as you take a look at Jalen Johnson a grad player who transfers in from Alabama AM and Milwaukee he's from Indianapolis he is playing back home tonight for Grambling State so Gene Steratore, our rules analyst, watch it. Gene, what'd you think? 
You know, uh, guys, I agree with Stan. He's not pulling him down, but when you look at the definition of a flagrant one in college basketball, too, unwarranted, doesn't really look like or feel like a basketball play to me. Johnson gets trapped behind Edie. I know he's in a bad position because we know where Edie's going with this ball, but when you're intentionally grabbing someone and, and stopping them from rising in that situation, I think by definition that rises to a flagrant foul and they'll, and they'll assess a flagrant one on the play. That's what they've done. They've assessed a flagrant one foul. Now, of course, and what that means is Zach Eady will go to the line to shoot two, and then Purdue will get the ball. I mean, that, that's that's an easy call. And here, there's the flagrant one foul. Unnecessary or excessive? I don't think it was excessive, but, but it was certainly unnecessary. You know, taking his fourth free throw, he's 0-3. And in, in fairness, it's unnecessary if you don't have to guard Zach Eaton. <laughs> For all the people who have to guard him, they're disagreeing. They're saying, no, it's not unnecessary. It's my only chance. Now, Jalen Johnson is trying to guard him at six feet in. And Zach Eaton is seven feet four. Grappling always does this on the baseline out of bounds. They don't guard the inbound there, they zone up. They try to make it tough for you to get it in, in the inbounds. Heidi is a freshman. That lost the ball right there. Picked up by Kofi. On the run, that shot is. There's a pop convert. Edie's got the ball, and they get tangled up. Wow, you get those chances when they hand you the ball. You're grambling. You, you've got to convert on that two on one. It's hard to convert on a two-on-one with Edie back there. He wasn't back there on the first shot. <laughs> That's true. It's Dozier on top. Got the screen. From Michael Martin. Student from Shreveport, Louisiana. He was the SWAT Tournament MVP. Coming off a great game. Intercepted. It's picked up by Smith, ahead to Warrior. Smashes into the paint. Purdue is, Purdue is a very solid defensive team, but they actually don't force very many turnovers. And when you allow them to get out and go, you're just asking for trouble. Martin picked up the foul. 13 40 to play here in the first half. No, oh, it was not a shooting foul. I, I, look. I don't understand that, but they need to change the rule. <laughs> no, they, they, they seriously oh, have being very serious. Before yeah. halftime, you're re yeah, before halftime. Look, you're rewarding the defense for fouling right there. He's already in his shooting motion. He's picked up the ball. They've got to let that count. Jalen Johnson just picked up his first foul, defending Edie. Child, refresh your fandom with the delicious Coke Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Try and decide. Edie has drawn four fouls already as Miles Colvin will check in for the Purdue Boilermakers taking the place of Fletcher Royal. Well, Edie draws almost 12 fouls a game, and he's usually playing against people a lot bigger than this. Tom Burnett, Dozier, and now Mo. He'll take the shot inside the arc. It's a two, and right? he's... Well, those shots available. It is, and they have to make that shot. They've got to recognize that it is available, Stan. They have to get it, and of course, they've got to knock it down. And they're back in 2-3 zone now, trying to give them a little bit of a different look. Tom Burnett still does not play the right. Ten oh, 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 point play oh, shot by Gillis. Rebound Edie. This is on the floor. It's against Grambling. That is already eight offensive rebounds for Purdue. Eight. We played seven minutes. Well, he, he, Lamine was hanging on to one arm, and he grabbed the rebound with the other one. Well, 
Reed is back in that drop, which they play all the time. If you set solid screens, the guards are going to have space to shoot jump shots. And keep in mind that Grambling State is not a team that shoots the three a lot, but they shot 45% from beyond the arc in the slap tournament. Beauty again. What made the challenge? 12 for Edie. Rolls the other way. To three. And a rebound by Edie. Moten had gone three of three to start, including a triple. Baden Smith throw line up a three. Edie Fennel. his third one already. They went under that on the handoff. We have a turnover. And we take it. Cross court. Dozier makes the fake into the paint and over Edie. And that's what you have to do. You can't take the ball right at him. You get that opening. He's standing back there. You've got to pull up and take that jump shot. Bozier's done both already tonight. He's taken it right off. That's what he time. did. And then that time, very smart play. Grambling trying to stay in this zone. Oh, Fourteen points. Now, I don't even know what to say. I mean, they, they've just got no answer whatsoever. And now, uh, Levine is six. They list him at 6'11", but... He's not had any better luck than anybody else. Those are on top. Braden Smith on him. Shot clock at nine. Wiggles his way in. Edie's got the rebound. The other way, Smith. Edie, screen. And Smith will feed. It ends up in the corner. Good. Screen missed it all. Edie it. Head from behind. Lamine with the defense.
TNT Connected Cam with a wonderful view of the domination inside of Zach Eady. 14 points all on the doorstep with complete control. And moments ago, Andy Katz had a chance to catch up with Purdue head coach Matt Painter. Well, Matt, so far, how do you think Zach has handled everything that they're trying to do to him? They've scratched him, they've pulled him down, yeah, yeah. yet he's able to still be effective inside. Yeah, they, they've been pretty physical with him. Obviously, their their biggest guy is the guy who started, and he got two quick ones on him. But just make the right decision. You know, just get deep post position. They're, they're kind of swarming him, but they're not doubling. And so you got to be able to make some shots and loosen some things up. Thanks, Matt. All right, thank you. You know, Stan, yesterday, watching him practice, you commented, you think that Edie is in great physical shape, like his conditioning is perfect. Yeah, Matt Painter talked about his progression over the years. Like this guy, if they needed him, Dan, I have no doubts in the NCAA tournament with a little bit longer timeouts and things that he could play 36, 38 minutes in a game if they needed him to. At the free throw line is Contavious Dozier. In the first four against Montana State, Dan, six points, five rebounds, two assists in the win over Montana State. Well, he's been terrific tonight. He's got 10 already. Yeah, he's hit two pull-ups, but he's also taken it right at Edie three times, two buckets, and goes to the line twice, and now Grambling goes zone press. I think that kid, Royer, is really going to be a big key for Purdue advancing through the tournament. He had huge games in the non-conference season against Alabama and Tennessee. And when he's knocking down the threes, Purdue is a different animal. Fassman is in. Protecting the rim. Jones is in. Here he goes. Jones down that baseline. Knocked away. And Lamine got in the way and a foul. Warrior knocks this one in. He's a sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana. The Tigers of Grambling State, first ever appearance in the NCAA tournament. Coached by Dante Jackson, who was talking moments ago with our Andy Katz. Well, Dante, obviously it's been hard to control Zach Eady. But how do you get out on those shooters to make sure you stay in this game here in the first half? That's the tough part about it. We got to do a better job of trying to, when we do try to come double him, still rotate out and take the shooters away. And then we got to do a better job of finding them in transition. We cannot give up both. If we give Zach a chance to have 50 tonight, at least we're in the game. If we give up threes and Zach getting 50, we're not going to be in the game. So we just got to do a better job of offensive rebounding and making sure we scramble better. Thanks, Dante. Thank you. Well, he's 36 points away from 50. He's got 14 right now, and here's Lance Jones at the line. Last rebound aggressively taken by Dozier inside for the Tigers. That's an interesting philosophy. You guard everybody else and sort of let Edie do whatever damage he can. You don't just give him the baskets, but you play him really hard. And that's tough because Purdue has some guys who can shoot it. Dozier driving. Kaufman Rennies there defensively. Dozier is breaking down their defense and causing a lot of problems. 12 right now. Again, one of the areas where Purdue sometimes struggles is against quick guards staying in front of him. And Dozier has shown he can get by anytime he wants. 13 minutes down here in the first half. Warrior. Gillis. The three. Good job right there. Missed by Smith. Rebound collected inside the Lamine. Here comes Mikhail Stevenson. Jones is on. Again, you see, they're really trying to beat the guys out of the corner. Game changes a little with Zach Eady out of the game. Kaufman Wren is a good player, but he's not seven foot four. I don't understand why he would play in front of Lamine and allow the ball to be lobbed over his head. No, exactly, because Lamine's not a highly skilled low post player. Shot clock at 10. Pass on the shot at the fingertips of Smith. And out of bounds. Choose perfection. Choose LG OLED EVO. I know you guys know what that is. Yes, of course. 
The one thing we know what it is, is Lamine is a guy, this is only his 19th game of the year. He only plays about 6.4 minutes a game when he does play, and he's only in the game now because everybody else is in front of him. Edie has come back in, too. Bolton is on top. It's a good coaching adjustment by Matt Pinto. <laughs> Bolton on the wing. Smith on top, Dozier again. Edie the rebound. He's got 10. And already a double double. Lance joins the other way. Inside, Kaufman ran. Double right, no. Rebound, locks down to by Dozier. Oh, he got hammered on that shot. In his drive to the rack. The miss in there. Stevenson couldn't get it. Jones the other way. Saxon. He had the ball knocked away. And a foul called on Lance Jones at three. Well, this game, I mean, it's really physical at the moment. The ball goes inside to Kaufman Wren. I mean, you can't hit the guy in the head. <laughs> they bring back in Jonathan Aku. Aku is a transfer from Texas A&M. He started the game, fouled a couple times, back in right now for the final five minutes. Move. I don't think Purdue should play slowly, but I think when they get out of transition, right at the moment, they're going way too fast. Dozier, through traffic. Smith will fire. Puts it in. Jordan Smith, a senior from the end. A transfer from Coastal Carolina. And a 6-0 run for Grambling. And that Smith could be a very important player. That is his first shot of the game, which I'm surprised by, because he's an aggressive scorer. But Purdue's got to give Edie a look every time. There he is, Edie again. He beats a cool in the There's very little a cool can do. He's got those two fouls. And when Edie gets that close to the basket, you just forget it. Well, and that's why, Dan, you're talking about Purdue. Yeah, yeah maybe you run a little bit, but you can't play past your best player to where he's never getting the ball. There's your on a point blank look. And he misses a time going state. And I think Braden Smith and Matt Painter have realized that. Well, and even on a miss there, we're going to slow it down. And one sex and give Edie a look. But Edie's like a ping pong ball being passed off by him. Kaufman run. Intercepted. Picked up as Kaufman run. Pushed it up. It's Stevenson the other way. A deflected pass. It's inside. for the other player on players on Purdue's team, but they're really struggling. Gillis, you know, he shot an air ball, and that last pass bounced off the chest of Kaufman Wren, and it looked like he had a chance to have a layup. I, I love Grambling's game plan on Judy. They're trying to keep a body on him, even away from the ball. It's just so hard to play, but the way they're playing it makes a lot of sense. And again, Edie's not going to jump out on that screen. You can set that screen and wheel around it. And if you've got a good screen, you're going to have an open jump shot. Yeah, you're going to have those shots all night long, Dan. You're absolutely right. And Gramlin doing a good job as a crew picks up his third right there. Now, Akur and Smith were double teaming him quite literally, even though he didn't have the ball. That's what you're talking about. Akur is right there, and Smith is right behind. And Edie does such a good job just holding his position. He's not really pushing back at Aku to the point where he's going to move Aku. And so that's why he doesn't, Aku, excuse me, that's why he doesn't get the foul. Think how beat up Edie gets with that size and the attention physically he gets with the missed free throw there every single game. 
which is why Edie is not only a guy who's very difficult to guard, he's also a guy who's very difficult to officiate. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it is. That leaves a very difficult job with Big. But I'm going to say on that last one, I didn't see a foul here. Bowden's got the ball. Brady Smith for defender. Shot clock is down to five. Boy, you're not out. It's off to Stevenson. Quarter on the fly. Short on the play. Shot clock right on the Watch all of men's games on your computer, your phone, tablet, or streaming device. With NCAA March Madness Live. Download now to stay up to date on all the action. Boilermakers, ninth consecutive NCAA tournament berth. Two and a half to go in the half. Grambling aggressive defense. I, I think Grambling is defense. Good pass. 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 Bowden setting up, shot clock at four, it's a three. Rebound inside, the leaping. Fletcher McWarrior's got it. And now Braden Smith the other way. Driving inside, looking for the open man. It's Gillis for three. Rebound inside, Smith. It's low. Fletcher McWarrior's the triple. Oh, offensive rebound. Well, that's the game right now. It's not first shots. If we want first shot against first shot, this is an even game. Jordan Smith. Burnett on the side. Burnett's got it. Three. It's a rebound pulled down by Lawyer. Braden's with the other way. Sifting through traffic. It's a Gillis fighting for it. Also with hands on it, Stevenson. A tie-up. And it'll be Purdue's ball coming up on at and at the half. Get all the scores, all the highlights, and the latest NCAA tournament news. All coming up on at and at the half. And Dan, I'm with you. You said it earlier. Braden Smith's a great player. He's a great shooter. I don't like that shot. To not have Zach Eady even involved in a play on a possession is a bad possession in my opinion. Screen by Gillis. Smith with the ball and fires the triple. 80 the rebound. Hammered and fired. Again. And I honestly think Braden Smith took that shot knowing that Zach Eady was right down there underneath the basket. So even if he missed, Eady was going to get the rebound, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, on this last one, but not on the one in transition. Well, here, Eady's in perfect position, and yes, Smith is. is smart enough. He can see that, so if the ball misses, this big guy's going to get it. Edie was not the first big center that they recruited at Purdue. They were after Hunter Dickinson, and they thought they had him. But then Dickinson chose Michigan. And then they went for Edie. And Edie was one of the top 400 players ranked coming out of high school. That's where he was, and that's what this program has done. They've taken that and made him probably a two-time college player of the year. Won last year, should win it this year. Inside, no place to turn. So he goes over Edie. And Martin can't get it. And the rebound by Mason Gillis. Dozier could not get the basket. Got a second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And stunned it's a seven-point game. Well, Edie being four for nine at the line has helped Grambling quite a bit. Mason Gillis, Edie's on top. Shot clock down to eight. Fletcher Warriors got it. We'll try. Time the win. Take you to the studio after this on TBS. Second half moments away, taking a look at the Ritz first half statistics. You can see from three that Purdue is plus 15 points. 
Just a moment. Uh, what do you think of Zach Eady in the first half? 16 and 11. Well, I mean, they, there's nothing they can do with Zach Eady. They're swarming him, they're surrounding him, they're scratching him, they're knocking him to the ground, and still, he's been the dominant force in the game. Well, there's no question, but the whole game is offensive rebounds. They're yes. down nine, and Purdue's up 12 to nothing on second chance points. Grambling's game plan has been good. They are clearly not the least bit intimidated but they can't get rebounds. Well, and uh, one, don't you think, don't you guys think it'd be interesting, even though Purdue says they accept it, they understand it and everything, what happened last year has to weigh on their mind. It's got to. And I wonder what would happen if Grambling could actually make this thing close. How would Purdue react? That would be a great question. I think Grambling's figured out how to get opportunities to play out of that pick and roll and, you know, get shots against the drop. Rambling State will have it on top. It's Dozier. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And the shot that'll go in from Michael Martin. Puts in the two and he's got nine. Well, their guards have 21 of their 29 points. And it's all been attacking on the pick and roll against Edie's drop. Edie in there. Andy Cairns, what did you find out at halftime? Well, I talked to both head coaches, Matt Painter and Dante Jackson. Dante Jackson says, we've got a rebound. That's number one. Obviously, make shots like you just saw over there. And for Matt Painter, he says, we've got to make free throws. We'll see here Zach Eady make layups and continue to get their bids in foul trouble. Bean just picked up his third. Andy, thank you very much. Now, Edie has gone through stretches in his career where he's been a very poor free throw shooter, but not this year. He's struggling tonight, that's for sure. Eight of the ten Crambling State fouls have been on Edie. Well, that's not surprising. It sure isn't. Here comes Martin, the grand student. It's Malik Lamine, and they get it over. They swing it around, Smith. Ramin and Martin. Jones was defending. Rebound Hoffman win. Taken away. Dozier on the win. A three Martin. And picked up by Braden Smith. And the Boilermakers are running. Jones the fake. Quickly converged on. Into it. Jones had the ball. He was all alone, and nobody saw him until Braden Smith got the ball and zipped it right through it. Well, Braden Smith knew before he got the ball where he was going with that. Now, Jermichael Martin missed two shots on that last possession. He is playing an outstanding basketball game. And Julius Dozier right here. Braden Smith is on. Nice move by Dozier to get free. Huffman ran. Almost had the rebound. It's brought in by Smith and outside the Jones. That's Jones' first field goal. ago going to commercial we had this little interchange between Purdue and Grambling State no call there well, but then watch <laughs> <laughs> a little love chat well, it's getting a little chippy here Purdue is on 11 to 2 run since Grambling State got to within four 31-27 there's so much pressure on Grambling State's guards to basically make every shot. Yes. Moten on top. Antoine Burnett. Now to Jalen Johnson. Aku and Moten. He's picked up by Jones. Dozier's had the hot hand, got the screen into 80. Trades, dives, falls, foul. 
I'll tell you what, every time Contavious Dozier has attacked Edie, he's been successful. Either drawing a foul or getting a bucket. And an interesting adjustment here by Dante Jackson. This is the first time we've seen it tonight. He's playing two bigs together to try to get on the glass. A coup and Jalen Johnson in the game at the same time. It's Dozier at the line for the Tigers, who have won the regular season in the postseason tournament in their conference. Not all Cinderella stories have a happy ending. Follow the madness and mayhem on a new episode of 90 Day Fiancé. Happily Ever After, Sundays at 8 on TLC. 2-2-1 two, two, press after the free throw again, going back to man-to-man, -to -man, just trying to slow the tempo a little, get their defense set. Braden Smith, DD down low, just picked up his second person. Oh, yeah. And the shot, 21. Well, that's the second one of those, you can't give that up. I know he can make the jump hook, you gotta keep pushing him up to the middle and make him make the jump hook. Spinning baseline, you can't allow. But what, a, what a great job by Edie to get that spot. Oh, no, no, it's a great for a quick spin. Yes, it is. Very good for him. Dozier over Edie, a tough shot, the degree of difficulty there. Dozier is 16 for Grambling State. He's keeping him in it. Yeah, he is. He and Martin, and, and listen, they're sort of, sh I, I think they're showing teams a good game plan against Purdue. Inside. The tussle continues, Aku and Edie. Aku picks up his fifth. Well, here it is, he just takes the bump and spins. Well, Aku is trying really hard to keep him out of the lane, and Edie recognizes that. What a great dribble and pivot. Unless you're bringing somebody to help along the baseline, you can't stop it. Jones will inbound, Kwasman win. And I, I think that's a product of just devoting so much attention to Edie. No question. Dozier, two shot again. Double on the play. Huffman win the rebound. Outlet goes to Braden Smith. On the wing, Jones. It's Edie inside. Another foul. This one will go on Malik Lamine. For his fourth. We got the starting center with four. The backup center's got four, and they're going to the bench again. And looks like uh, Jordan Smith may come in six seven against the seven four Edie. Well, if I'm Jordan Smith, I'm sitting over here trying to be as small as I can. I'm going to hide so they don't notice me and say, "You're going to go." Now he's going to get one of the bigs out because I can't have them both picking up fouls. But listen, I don't know that I've ever seen a game where it's been this much just about one guy. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing that matters in this game is Zach Eady. I don't mean that to demean any of Purdue's players. It, it's just, he's totally controlled this game. It's the biggest lead for the Boilermakers tonight. The top seed, 15 point advantage. With four minutes into the second half. Burnett's got it. Royer is there. Kaufman Ren. We'll go on Smith. Shot clock down to nine. Antoine Burnett. The bump in the roll. Edie the rebound. Outlet goes to Smith. Lance Jones catches. Fires it to Kaufman Ren and it's off his fingertips. And ricochets out of bounds. The Boilermakers by 15. Timeout. Takes more presented by Powerade. And Zach Eady has been pulled and scratched and clawed and any other thing you can think of in there, grabbed and wrestled all night long. And Kevin, he's had a tremendous kick. <laughs> he's got 14 rebounds to go along with 23 points, and so I don't know what more you can do, but obviously it takes more, and it, it's, it's just not being done. And he's drawn 10 of the 12 Grambling fouls so far. And he's really just, on, on top of the numbers, he's wearing them down. It takes so much to try to compete with this guy that you're giving away so much size to.
That's an amazing number. He's got more rebounds than the entire Grambling team. That's amazing. They have 13 offensive rebounds. Grambling has. Yeah. Does it? Knocked away by the other two now. Out of bounds. The ball is picked up by Johnson. And a turnover. As he was uh, rebounding with the foot out of bounds. And let's go to Andy Kantz. Brandon Brantley, who was the uh, Big Ten's Howard Moore Assistant Coach of the Year, coached Zach Eady the last four years. And I was talking to him yesterday about Eady's development. A sponge when he got here. Now, he was not completely raw, but he had to take a back seat to Travion Williams, share the minutes, and continue to grow in his conditioning, his strength, his footwork, his passing ability. Every single day, Brandon Brantley was telling me he came to work. And we're seeing it exhibited here with back-to-back, -back likely, Player of the Year awards. And not many guys are going back-to-back, Andy, as you know. And uh, I talked to you, Stan, earlier in the game about his condition. And it makes such a difference. A body that big to be in that condition. Here is Lance Jones inside. And defended well. Edie's clearly put in a lot of work and takes great pride in what he does. And it would be a travesty if he didn't win the player of the year. That will bubble up on the shot by Johnson. And Braden Smith the other way. Terrific player. When he's talking to the official, I don't know what he's talking about, but he's having an animated conversation with Doug Slaus. Here comes Jalen Johnson putting one up on the fly. Lance Jones with the rebound. Braden Smith will go the other way. Triggers the break and looks to feed and does to Kaufman win. So many stories, and that Pac-12 story is just one of them. On top here for Moten, falls through. It's Burnett taking it right into Edie's defense. Oh, and he slaps it away! Second block, playing handball. Well, up until now, they've done a nice job stopping and pulling up out of range. <laughs> Not gonna have much success doing that. Well, and he tried to fade away from him. We said with Dozier in the first half, he went right at him. That's a foul. Now, if you're gonna call all these fouls at the other end, you've got to call that. He got fouled on that shot. Braden Smith coming out on him with some defense. Trembling State. They bring in Mason Gillis on top of him. And hand off to Braden Smith. Gillis, he's playing well, too, coming into this tournament. Edie, Gillis, faking, driving inside, and looking for the open man. You thought he found him in Warrior, and out of bounds it goes. In the shot clock, with a half second on it. And Gillis passed up two shots there. Yeah, I mean, if you got the shot, you have to take it. Now, get a body on Edie right now. Don't let him go toward the rim. Quick inbound, quick fire. Smith! <laughs> Rebound collected in there by Jordan Smith of the Tigers at Grambling State. Moten making a move. They got a pretty good shot for 0.5 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, they sure did. Grambling State with two consecutive 20 win seasons. Smith, Burnett, Johnson with it, looking for the open man. The shot clock throw down to six. Stevenson moves, slashing inside, rams into Eddie. He's got the ball. Another rebound for him. Eight straight misses. Hold on!
That's a Johnson three. Another rebound by Edie. 18 of them. The ball is over. Two for 14 here in the second half. Well, I think the Purdue pressure on the ball in the second half has been much better. Purdue's done a much better job fighting through the screens as Grambling runs through their motion offense. And as a result, they have not gotten the kind of shots they were getting in the first half. Braden Smith, Edie up high. That's a turnover. Jordan Smith has it. Goes into Braden Smith and a foul called on Braden Smith of the Boilermakers. With 11.45 to go and a little run right there by Purdue. They got Heidi Airborne and the freshman got it from the sophomore. And now, thrilling drives presented by Nissan. And we've seen some beauties tonight. Well, Purdue, you know, in the second half, they've been able to get out and run a couple of times. And Braden Smith can really deliver in transition. One note about Braden Smith. He now has 402 career assists. Only the fourth ever in Big Ten history to have 400 assists in his first two seasons. The others, you may know their names. Magic Johnson, Cassius Winston, Trey Burke. Not bad. <laughs> no, bad not pretty all. good. That first name, especially, went on to have a pretty decent career. He did. When you're on the same list as that guy, yeah. it's a pretty good list. At the line here, Jordan Smith. Started most of the season for Grambling. Grambling began the season 2-10, then went 18-4 and four after January 1st. They can throw it here on the miss, and Moten's got the ball. Warrior is in front. Got the screen from Johnson. It's outside the lane. Jalen Johnson. They converge on him. Moten, three. That's one of the few times in this half that Moten has been able to get away from Braden Smith. Well, Moten and Dozier have 27 of Grambling's 36 points. No one else really able to get involved at all. Lawyer to Edie. Edie hits the cutting Heidi. Flying up and falling on him. There's Kofer. And Camden Heidi, the number one player in the state of Minnesota, and a freshman for Purdue, took the collision. That's just a great cut by Heidi. And, and Edie does a great job. He turns and he looks. He sees the double team come and sees the open area, and Heidi filled it. Heidi, whose dad went to Purdue at the free throw line. Watch ripple on coverage of all men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device. We have Fast Break presented by Nissan in the March Madness Live app. Download now. It's already done. I know it is. Okay. You've been looking at it all night long. And it's full of information. It's a terrific app to have. Absolutely. This time of year, my goodness. You want to stay up to date because there are a lot of moving parts, minute to minute. Yes, yes. He was there. When you're going to take the ball and drive to the basket like that, it's got to be after you've moved the ball around from side to side and made Edie move. If he's just going to be standing back there in the lane, you've got no shot. I mean, he's just playing volleyball. A spinner right here by Kofa. Leaping rebound by the high-flying Heidi. Yeah, Heidi's great athlete. A lot of spring. Here's Lance Jones, a transfer from Southern Illinois. What a pickup he's been. Inside, Gillis. Hey. Oh, he checked it inside, Edie. And then he got it. And you saw the result. Well, he was 25. Grambling's making such great effort. Edie's too big and too good. But Edie, what a great job to maintain his pivot foot in there. Now oh, just go right back up with it. It's Moten with the ball, approaching the halfway portion of the second half in Indianapolis, weaving for the shot. And the 18 footer is pure. Moten and Dozier are the two guys who've been able to get that shot today. Yeah, off the pick and roll, and, and as Purdue moves forward in the tournament, 
Those are the shots that are always available against them, but they're two-point jump shots for the most part, and you've got to make a very high percentage of them. Stevenson, a foul, Andy Katz. Example. Of a player who responded to what Dante Jackson is selling in Grambling. In this transfer portal era, what was played his entire five years at Grambling. I was talking to him yesterday. He says, talking about the family atmosphere. And Dante Jackson was telling all of us that they've had very few transfers, if any, over the last couple of years. They're one of the handful of programs that has not seen players leaving out, which is very rare at that level. And a great point, Andy, by you as they uh, work it around here. Wide open three. Smith. Easy to rebound. Oh. 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 And the two. 20 rebounds matching this season. I'm going to give you some in-depth analysis here. Zach Eady is dominating this game. I don't know if you realized it. Well, he did such a great job right there because he was, now of course he jumped up over everybody, but once he comes down, they're really bodying him up and he's able to still get the ball to the goal. Put the back to Andy Krebs real quickly. Dante Jackson, Andy, he's, he's in his seventh year. He's a two-time coach of the conference. Uh, he's, he really creates the right culture for this program. No, he definitely does. And they finally broke through this year by beating Texas Southern. They won the regular season back-to-back -back years. He's building something special in the swag. And he told us that home and home they had with the Pac-12 last year, the Pac-12 swag challenge, where they got Colorado on their home court a year ago and beat them, was a program-changing win. The swag schools, as you guys know, do not get Power 5, Power 6 schools to come into their gym. It took the conferences to make it happen. But that showed to his players, we can compete at this level. Good stuff, Andy Moten hit the three. Now they make a steal and they come the other way. Then on the wing, step back. Moten looked like he was going to take it. And then the convergence defensively of Braden Smith. Now he drives. And out of bounds, knocked away. It's Kremlin State's ball at 17 seconds. On the shot clock. I mean, just imagine this team. They played in Dayton. They win the conference tournament. They make their first ever NCAA tournament appearance. Grambling State does. And they win. Now they come up against the number one team with the college player of the year. They get a call from the vice president. I mean, it's almost too good to be true. That's uh, fantastic. And look, they're down 20 in this game. They're not going to come back, in my opinion. But they have acquitted themselves well. On the fly. Moten can't get it, and then it drops. On the first bounce, Moten's got 19. And this is Moten's last game at Grambling, it and sure he is. has been outstanding tonight. All a part of what Andy was just talking about. Sticking with it. Very few transfers out. Lock coming in. Heidi three. Hey! 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 As they tangle inside, out of bounds. It will be Grimbling State's ball. Their effort has not waned. Not at all. One, not, not at all. One little bit. They have not gotten discouraged. They're fighting. They're, they're still attacking smartly, not getting selfish. And when they won in Dayton, they were just the ninth in 51 NCAA tournament games for the SWAC. Another rebound for Edie, who just builds that number. It's up to 21. We're down. Grambling was down 14 points in the second yep. half of that game and came back. This is a very resilient basketball team. I give their players and their coaching staff a ton of credit. Edie couldn't find the handle. Miles Colvin, whose dad played in the NFL oh. with the New England Patriots. Another team. He's got 30, 30 and 21. If he's going to make that shot, then there's nothing you can do. Not, absolutely not. 30 and 21. There's big numbers. And has played this entire half, if I'm not mistaken. They got Moten. I mean, rarely all. Uh, no, I often am, but... Burnett, to Jalen Johnson. Colvin's got the rebound. Lose 29 wins, tied for the second most in program history this year. If they win tonight, it'll be number 30. And you got to go back 
Six years to find another 30 win season for the Boilermakers. In the corner, Heidi will drive into a couple. It's the net, fired on the play. It can get treacherous inside. Six and a half to go. Top seed Purdue on the move and looking to the round of 32. So Braden Smith going down low, like so many times, finds a Shaq Eady. And Eady is only the second player to have 30 points or more and 20 rebounds or more in a tournament game since 1976. And that was Joe Smith who did it with the Terrapins in 95, Coach Gary Williams. And that game helped propel Joe Smith to be in the number one overall pick in the NBA draft. Indeed it did. The winner here, probably the Boilermakers, will take on either Utah State or TCU. That is up next. That is an 8-9 matchup we've been looking forward to. At the free throw line is Camden Heidi. Now we were talking about this at the break between us. Zach Eady just went 13 minutes and 25 seconds straight. Obviously he's out because they're up 20 points with six minutes to go. But I think it shows his conditioning, Dan, that you talked about in the open. And if they get in a really tight game in this tournament, he certainly could go the entire second half. Uh, Matt Painter pointed out to us the timeouts are so much longer and there's an extra timeout that he feels like that's very possible. Well, and he's done such a great job with his conditioning. Caleb first has taken his place, the junior. With the shot clock now at nine, making the move. Stevenson inside. A lot of congestion, but he makes it go. And he's got four. It's a little easier to have a little more confidence when you go down inside when Edie is not in the game. That's absolutely right, and you saw it right there. Braden Smith, 11 points, nine assists. Down low for first to follow Mr. Indiana Basketball. Colvin on the win. And first down low. And spin, doubled, and gives off the cut the That's a nice pass there by first. That's his first assist of the night. And Stevenson. That's a three-point shot by Jamel Crawford. Crawford can't get it. What a weird event, the NCAA tournament. Kofa has 19 the other night. And then the second hand scored tonight. Been around again. He is an Indiana Mr. Basketball. He put it up in the He's no Zach Eady, but he is a really good low post play. Yeah, I'll tell you what he, I think he does a great job of is moving his feet to get post position. It's very hard to keep him from getting a deep catch. He does such a good job sealing down there and keeping you on his back. Antoine Burnett picked up his first leg club. He was not Mr. Basketball. Kaufman Wren was the Indiana High School Basketball Player of the Year. There is a difference. They both give him out, but he was part of a two-state championship team that Trey Kaufman Wren was at Silver Creek High School in Sellersburg, Indiana. Out going with a standing ovation, Braden Smith. What a terrific player. The engine for this team in so many ways. And he's got that calf wrapped up, as he you does. can see, and that's an injury that has bothered him, and so they're very happy to get him out and give him a little bit of rest. Mikhail Stevenson. He goes inside. Aku gets it. And a foul. And I think it went on first, and it did. Well, this may not seem like a big deal, a one beating a 16, but this is a big weight off of Purdue's shoulder. Without any question. Yep, we know that they had lost in the first round two of the last three years, last year to FDU. The rules are simple. Win to get in. Tune in as playoff hopefuls battle to earn their spot in the postseason. The NBA playing tournament begins April 16th. 7 o'clock Eastern, TNT, True TV, and Max. And Kevin Pino is a guy who does the NBA. 
What a tremendous success that play in tournament has been. It creates great excitement that never would have happened with the teams at the end of the playoff. And it extends, usually it was eight, now it's up to ten teams. And from seven to ten, they all compete. Coughlin ran across the lane a very gentle hook. And he's got 11 all in the second half. You know, I know they have success playing Kaufman, Wren, and Edie at the same time, but if you're Kaufman, Wren, and you're the secondary guy in there, that's a hard job. And so when you have the, the low post all to yourself, it's a little bit easier and a little bit more fun, I would think. Well, he projects at least to be their go-to inside guy next year. That's a two by Jalen Johnson. Five rebounds on the by Kaufman. And first has got it. There it goes, Colvin. And Lance Jones. Colvin is, a, Colvin is a guy who could be an X factor later on in his turn. He's pretty athletic, can shoot a little Good bit. Point. Jones makes a move. And we'll pop a three. He leads him in three point shots now. And that's another thing that's very important for them. Jones has been a big factor in their improved three-point shooting. That's only the second field goal tonight. They're much better when he's scoring at a higher rate. He averages 12 a game. In fairness, though, they haven't needed those well, guys that's tonight true. because that's they true. could dominate inside. I think we'll see Lance Jones be much different on Sunday. Mark aggressively takes it in, but lost the ball, stripped of it, vacuumed in. It's Corbin taking it back. Two on one the other way. Just came through. Pretty play, Stevenson. That's what Coleman was trying to do. Right. Exactly right. Still, I'm very impressed. The Indian State's effort has not wavered even now. Nope. Jones, three. It's a rebound by Hardy. Back to Coleman. He won't go. Inside claim by Stevenson. He's a sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana. From Michael Moulton. The mismatch on first and takes the two-point shot. First, the rebound. And Michael Moulton's got to be exhausted. Yes, he does. He's played this whole second half. He handles the ball. He's got to make every play. Chance for these kids to get in. 
know about playing in this tournament your whole life. Inside is Waddell. Oh, good. He was coached by his dad in high school. At Central Catholic High in Lafayette. On top, Martin. Shot clock at two. He's got a fire. Ooh, foul. Power goes good. Foul call. Naku. Naku's got to think, how many more seven-foot guys do they have? <laughs> they got size, don't they? I mean, Aqua is just pushing as hard as he can. I don't know that. I mean, he's leaning on the ground. He's just shaking his head. And there's nothing more that poor Aqua can do other than shake his head. that has got to be one tired guy tonight. Oh, absolutely. Gosh. Good heavens. I just don't see it, to be honest. I mean, he does extend his arm a little. There's a great big guy that just got knocked on the floor. I understand, but I think that guy got off balance. I think the referee reacted to him being on the floor. Is it possible that he got off, that he had some help being off balance? It is possible, but I don't think it's definite. Let's see. He's leaning on him, but... I think it looks like a common foul. Yeah, I think they just, you know, they went and looked at it, but they get 30 seconds to replace it. So anyway, Jonathan Aku, who played at Texas A&M and Stephen F. Austin. He's a senior from Nigeria. Offered the first NCAA tournament team in history for Grambling State. At the free throw line is Will Berg, who's 7 2. Told you he's from. Sweden has a lot of time with some of the national teams over there, the U18, U19 teams overseas, and now he's come to play in the Big Ten. Free throw attempts by the Boilermakers, and tonight, of course, against a 16 could be a little bit askew, but they average 10 more attempts a game, which is the largest differential in Division One. Purdue does over the points. And that's basically all because of one guy. Yep. Under a minute. Stevenson out there. It goes against Waddell. And there is a player who stepped out of bounds. And that was Dozier. And boy, did he put in a valiant effort tonight for Grambling State. Yeah, Dozier and Moten have both played extremely well. Now, I know Dozier is only 6 for 17, but was on the attack, had four rebounds. Here we go, it's a Carson Bell, he only had three points total all season. And he knocked in a three right there. I love to see the bench in a situation like that, and they love that moment for Bell. Because these guys are practicing against the starters every single day. And they put in the time. Open to four seconds, game clock, shot clock, open fires, Carter moves to right now, and that'll do it, and Purdue advances to the round of 32 in Indianapolis. Tournament games to continue on ITNT, CBS, and 3